now everyone just watching the YouTube video doesn't know anything about all that exam stuff that we just talked about. Now I've mentioned it, now they're scared. Don't be scared. All right, today we are gonna talk about filtering and convolution, which is a pretty fun topic. And as it turns out, pretty darn easy. And we've actually done a lot of this already in the sort of first half of the class, but we're gonna look at smoothing, we're gonna look at convolution, we're gonna look at convolution in the frequency domain. We'll take another look at the convolution theorem, which we already know. We'll look at a Gaussian filter, and then we'll move on with our lives. So first things up, let's talk about smoothing. Smoothing is an operation that tries to remove short-term variations from a signal in order to reveal long-term trends. Common smoothing signal is called a moving average. So question for you guys, if we had to apply one of our filter labels, low pass, high pass, band pass, band stop, band yeah, sorry, I said that one, right? To smoothing, what kind of filter is smoothing or moving average filter going to be? Don't all type it once. What type of filter, yeah, um, Curtis got the answer, but it was a, what type of filter will a smoothing uh, operation be, right? If you take a moving average, what kind of filter is that going to be? Yeah, low pass, right? It even says here, right, an operation that tries to remove short-term variations from a signal, right? So that's removing high frequency variation from a signal. So that's going to be a low pass filter. And a common smoothing signal is this. So what we're going to look at it. It's called a moving average. So moving average is a function which computes the mean of the previous n values for some value of n. So, for example, if we look at this graph, this was a um, Facebook uh, stock price closing data. So it's got, what, May 17th, 2012 to December 8th, 2015. Look at that stock price shooting through the roof. Um, but the important thing here, the important sort of thing to pay attention to is my fantasy football notifications. Now, um, notice the light gray is the raw signal, right? And it kind of... Is all over the place. All right, and then we have this blue, this dark blue sort of line going through. So this is the, in this blue line, they've done a 30 a day moving average, right? So they've set n equal to 30. And calculated the moving average. And of course you can see from this that what the signal is really doing, the longer term trends are much more obvious here because we've sort of filtered out all of the noise. So let's take a look at how this is done, so to speak. Discard. OK. So let's pull up Visual Studio Code. Let's move the tablet out of the way. And let's create a file. Let's call it demo1.py. And here we want it. No, now Python extension. Don't show again. So what we want to do is demonstrate a smoothing function. Smoothing, a smoothing function. So we need some dependencies. We're of course going to need our think DSP. As DSP, we're going to need NumPy. And we're going to want to plot some stuff, so let's get matplotlib. Dot pi plot as plt. All right, so the first thing we need to do is let's go ahead and create a signal. So let's create a, let's use a square wave. So we'll say signal equals dsp dot square at a frequency of 440 hertz. We'll leave all the defaults the same. I think 440 is still the default. From there, we're going to need our wave. Signal dot make wave. Duration equals one. Frame rate equals 440.1 kilohertz. And let's go ahead and grab a segment so we don't have to look at the whole thing. Segment equals wave dot segment. Duration equals 
zero one. Zero point zero one, right? So one one hundredth of a second. So first thing, let's plot that. So we'll go segment dot plot plt dot show just to see what we're working with. And there we go. Pretty standard issue square wave signal, right? Starts at zero, oscillates up to one. It's doing the stuff. We got a hundredth of a second going on here, right? Right off the bat, any questions about how we created this uh, square wave signal in Python? We should be pretty pretty good at this by now. All right. In that case, let's keep going. All right, line 13. So the next thing we're going to do is create what we're going to call the window. Window for the moving average filter. So what I want to do is this. Create, so I'm going to say window equals np dot one. So I'm going to create a numpy array of ones that has a size of 11. So we're going to say n equals 11. In fact, Probably better off if I did this, n equals 11, just to be a little bit more specific. And if I were to go ahead and print the window out, just so we can take a look. There we go, right? We're getting an array of one floating points. Now the next thing I want to do is this business. I want to say window equals window divided by the summation of window. So this function is going to add up every value in window. Let's do this. Print. Let's leave that. Let's take a look at that on both sides. Alright, so here our original window is all ones and now we've got a window that's got point oh nine oh nine oh nine oh nine. right? We've divided it all out so why would we want to do that? Can anyone wager a guess as to why we want to do that? Nobody? Curtis is right, man, because you want it to add to 1. And the reason we want to add it to 1 is because we're going to convolve it with our signal and take kind of an average of the whole thing. And there's a couple ways you can do it, right? We could add up everything and then divide by the whole thing. Or we could take this window, basically divide it down so that each section, if they all add up to 1, it will be the same thing as multiplying and getting the average. So this is just an alternate way to compute in an average, a running average, with a size of 11 in this case, right? So that's why we want to do here, right? So make sure, so window should add to 1. Let me calm down my print statements here. In fact, I'm going to lose my, now nah, it's losing. All right, so next up, we want to actually do some filtering. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say TS. I need to isolate the T's and the Y's from my signal segment here. So segment dot TS and Y's equals segment dot Y's. And then I'm going to actually change in now to be the length of my Y's. So now it's the length of my signal. And then the next thing I need to do is this. I'm going to create a padded array. DSP dot zero pad of window and length in. So what this is going to do, if I print out padded, so it's going to get me my original array starting with all of my stuff here and then it's going to pad the rest of zeros, right? And this is important because in order to make our, to make the algorithm work, both of the arrays need to be the same size. So what this does is it pads it with zeros so that still only our 11 
element long section is going to matter. It's going to involve, be involved in the adding up of everything. But here, we need them to be the same. So it's just going to load zeros into everything so that they're the same size, the same length, and we won't throw any errors. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to change. Well, actually, I'm not going to do that just yet. So padded equals, or excuse me, not padded, smoothed. So this is going to be our result. The final result here is going to be np dot zeros underscore like ys. Now what this does, this zeros like function, is going to create a an array of zeros that is the same size as. Um, as whatever you feed it, right? In this case, is ys, right? It'd also be the same shape. So if you gave it like an n-dimensional array, it would create an n-dimensional array of that so shape and size, all filled with zeros, right? We're basically doing the same thing. We're creating two arrays, one that's just preloaded with zeros, that's the same length as our y's, one that's got our window in it and a whole bunch of zeros, it's the same length as our y's, and then of course we're gonna have our y's right here. Um, now what I need to do is this. Let's see. Um, actually, I'm going to change this. I'm going to say window. I'm going off book now. Stuff's going to get messed up. And I want to iterate through a for loop now. For i in range in. So looping through the entire sequence. Um, smoothed at i is going to be equal to the summation of window times y of s. And then what I need to do now, so here's where the magic happens, right? So, so that value in i is you take window and you multiply it with y's, so that way we get all the products, we add them all up, we get our result. And that goes into the very first value of y. And the very next thing we're going to do is window equals np dot roll window by one. So what's going to happen now is we're going to now take our window and shift it over by one. So let me do this real fast. So let's go print window. And then window equals window, excuse me, mp dot roll window one and print window again. And run it. We're going to get a bunch of stuff. Okay. So check it out. So our very first one here is our window function that we started with, that we want. It's got our 11.09s sitting in it. And then if we go down to our next one, notice that we've got a, so this is after the roll, we've got a zero in the first element and then our 11.9s, right? So this shifts the values over by one and then drops a zero in the first one, right? This is gonna be that shifting effect that we get for um, our convolution. So let's lose that, let's lose that. Repeat.roll, window one. All right. So we're essentially going to do that. We're going to repeat that whole process as we roll the window all the way through our signal. And let's plot our results. PLT dot plot. My T's and Y's. PLT dot plot. My T's and my smooth. I'm going to go and throw a legend down. Original smoothed and plt dot show. So let's run that and see what we get. There we go. So make that a little bit bigger. All right. So what we can see here is that our square wave, our original square wave, right, is pretty close to ideal. And what we've done here is by smoothing it, we've like taken the edges off of it just a little bit, right? So we've gone, instead of jumping straight up, we've got to kind of ramp up now from zero to one. And instead of jumping straight down, we're gonna ramp down from zero 
or from one to zero, right? So all of that to say that by convolving with that smoothing window, we're sort of slowing the rate of change down a little bit, and we're getting these ramps on our square wave instead of just straight ups and downs. So any questions about that? Okay, all right. That took a little bit of time, so let's... So that's the signal from the textbook, but it's basically what we just saw. Our original signal there in light gray, and then our smooth signal showing those ramps up, um, taking the edge off our square wave just a little bit. So let's take a look at convolution. NumPy provides a very efficient convolution function, right? MP.convolve takes the stuff, so convolve is equal to MP.convolve ys window so you give it our signal give it your window um, mode equals valid here indicates that it should only compute values when the window and the array overlap completely so it stops when the right edge of the window reaches the end of the wave array so basically it's going to keep it confined to that space inside our signal array once it rolls and hits the end that's when it knows how to stop and there are reasons there are other applications for why you wouldn't want to do that why you'd want to keep going but we're not going to worry about that here All right and then we can make a convolve wave from our, um, our new signal that's the result of our con convolution. Okay, so that's it for convolution. Convolution and NumPy, very easy. And we spent a lot of time talking about convolution at the beginning of the class. So frequency domain. So how does smoothing impact the spectrum of the wave? Anyone want to wager a guess answer to that question? Now, does it remove them? Edward says it removes the high frequency components. No, it seriously reduces their amplitude. So hopefully we're going to reduce the spectrum of our signal. So let's go back to Python here. Let's create a new file. Let's call it demo2.py. And here, what I want to do is demonstrate how a smoothing window reduces the amplitude of the high frequency components. So we're going to need some basic stuff. We're going to need think DSP like always as DSP. We're going to need NumPy. NumPy as MP. We're also going to want to plot, so import matplotlib.py plot as plt. Um, and then one thing I want to do is some stuff that we've already done essentially is we're going to use the same wave. So I'm just going to copy and paste it from what we just did effectively there. And then so the next thing I want to do is get the spectrum. So wave spectrum equals wave dot make spectrum and plot that. So let's see what that gets us. Nice. So kind of what we expected, right? Although notice we have some, uh, you know, because what was our signal? Our signal wasn't exactly periodic, right, was it? So we've got some of that spectrum leakage happening on our signals. At least I think so. Let's take a look at that. Now I'm curious. Let me put the kibosh on that for a second. Wave dot plot. Ooh, I wanted the segment. What am I doing? Oh, segment. I just want to see the square wave again. Well, that's interesting. So it is periodic, but. Very strange indeed. Oh, actually, I wonder though. Hold on, what if I did just that? Whoa, look how jacked up that is. Cool. Okay, so let's not do this segment thing. And 
let's just leave it like that. So. Back to our spectrum. Maybe it's a little bit of aliasing instead of spectrum leakage. It sure looks like spectrum leakage, though. So let's see. All right. But the most important thing is that we got these high frequency, these frequency peaks at lower frequencies that drop off as we roll out to our folding frequency. Mm, yeah, but it is aliasing because that gets cut off pretty early. Okay. So now let's go ahead and let's do our windowing and let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to comment that out. Take it down, actually. Um, we're going to need some of our stuff. We need our window function from before. So same deal. Array of 1s, size 11. Divide them by the sum to get it such so that it adds to 1. And then I'm going to do my convolution, right? So I'm going to go convolved or convolved equals np.convolve of my y's. Or excuse me, my wave dot y's and my window mode equals. I'm going to use same this time and smooth equals DSP dot wave of convolved. Remember, because convolved is just a NumPy array, so we need to convert it back to a DSP wave. Frame rate equals wave dot frame rate and spectrum two equals smooth dot make spectrum and spectrum two dot plot so let's run that and see what it gives us hey there we go so the blue one is our original sequence and then now notice and our yellow one our orange one here is the smoothed one notice that it like so here at the top it's basically exactly the same right or it's, there's only a little bit of difference and then as we get off to our higher frequencies that difference between each of the amplitudes gets a lot higher right so it's basically there's none at these higher frequencies whereas there's still some in the original signal there one of the things that's kind of interesting to do when we look at the behavior of our filters is to plot the um, ratio of the spectrums. So what I want to do here instead is say that amps, the amplitude is equal to spectrum.amps and amps2 is equal to spectrum2.amps. Right, and then the ratio is equal to amps 2 divided by amps. Then one of the things that's done here in the book is we say ratio, any place where the ratio is amps less than 5, 60, so all those little dinky ones, we're going to take them out, equal to 0. And plt dot plot ratio and show. So notice a couple of interesting things in this ratio business, right? Which is, yeah, it drops off. So this is the difference or how much there's change between the original function and our filtered function. Now. Notice that, I mean, the first one is almost basically one, right? Meaning right here, at almost zero, our lowest frequency, our fundamental frequency, it's exactly the same. And then it falls off like we expected. And then it sort of bounces, right? So it doesn't just fall off directly, it sort of bounces off. And we have seen this function before. What is this function called? Yeah, good job, Curtis. Yeah, this is our sync function that we talked about in the previous, the first half of the class. If we were to sort of draw this as a line instead of just these amplitudes, then yeah, we would see each of these bits as a sync function. So that's pretty cool. And then what that tells us is what we already kind of knew, which is a sync function is a low pass filter. We're not just pulling off the high frequency components altogether. We're kind of doing it in a way that sort of gradually brings them down. So, I think that's pretty interesting. So, any questions about this plot or how we got it?
All right, in that case, let's keep moving. Let's see, just do that. So convolution theorem. Convolution theorem is what we already know. Is that if we convolve f and g and then compute the dft, we get the same answer as computing the dft of f and the dft of g and then multiplying the result. So convolution in the time domain is equal to multiplication in the frequency domain. So let's see how that works in code. All right, we'll call this demo 3.py. And here we want to demonstrate the convolution theorem. I think that's what we want to do. Import thing DSP as DSP. Import numpy as MP. Import matplotlib.py plot as PLT. All right, and some basic stuff. We want the original spectrum and our original signal. We'll copy and paste that in. We also want our spectrum two. So let's see. So this is all the same stuff. What I want to do now is kind of plot that sync function on top of it. So I'm going to do this. N equals so actually, let me back up. So what I've done here, this is exactly what we did in the previous file, which is we've gotten both the spectrums and we plot their relative ratios to each other. So we're going to have those there, and we're going to plot those again. But we're also going to do is say, do it kind of the old-fashioned way and multiply them. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say n is equal to length of wave dot y's. We're going to create a padded array dsp dot zero underscore pad the window length in so we're gonna pad the window then we're gonna take the Fourier transform of the window itself equals np dot fft dot rft so real Fourier transform fast Fourier transform of padded and then I'm gonna plot that so notice what happened here we've done we've created our sort of spectrum or smoothed out spectrum of our signal using convolution. And here we just said like, well, let's just take the window itself and plot it. So actually what I want to do first is I'm going to say plot, I'm going to do that bit that we did before where we plot the spectrums. All right, so let me run that and make sure that still does the thing. All right, so there's our spectrums. Ooh, actually, you know, let's do, let's have some more fun. Um, let's do, well, okay, well, never mind. we're going to plot a few things. And now on top of that, let's plot, not plot the absolute value of our frequency domain window. All right, so check that out. Let me put a legend down on that, plt.legend. Uh, the first one is the DMT of the window. And the next one is the result. Of convolution. Look at that again. There we go. So check this out. So this is what we're demonstrating. This is that convolution theorem. So if orange here is the result of convolution, right, the spectrum of the what happens with our signal after we've smoothed it, notice that if we just take the Fourier transform of the window itself, we get the exact same curve. Which means that we could do this, I think. I haven't tried this, but let's, I'm gonna take ourselves comment U, let's comment U. What if I had just the window and the 
our original signal. So let's say the spectrum dot plot. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, it's not quite going to fit, is it? Uh, no, it's not going to play along. Okay, never mind. I, wanted, I was going to see if maybe we could like map them over each other, but it doesn't quite work that way. So, that was a bust. But the important thing is, right, plot the FFT, you get that sync function of the window, which matches the ratio of... the result of convolution. So, any questions about that? I know I got kind of rambly there at the end because I was exploring on my own. All right, man. Let's see, so let's go down. I think we got a little bit more PowerPoint left to get through. How much time do we have? Oh, we still have lots of time. Oh yeah, from the current slide. So one last definition here. The definition is that the a filter, the definition of a filter is the Fourier transform of a window sequence. So if you take the DFT of a window, you get a filter. A little exam vocabulary nugget there. All right, so the last thing I want to do is, I think, yeah. So look at a Gaussian filter. Ooh, actually, hold on. I take it back. I don't think I want to do this after all. Yeah, never mind. I lied. We're not going to do this section. I thought it was kind of weird. I meant to take it out, but then I guess I forgot to because the Gaussian filter in... If you go to do this section in... So let me just like remove that. Um, if you go to do that section in the textbook, um, the Think DSP book, it's not going to work because SciPy has changed how their Gaussian filter stuff works. So if you follow the code example in the textbook, it'll throw an error because it'll say, hey, these classes don't operate the same way anymore. And so you got to do some change. And it got kind of weird, so I decided not to mess with it when I was preparing the lecture last night. And so don't worry about that yourself. So actually now I guess we are about done for today. So let's see. Yeah, there we go, man. Any questions about anything that we just talked about? Basically, the big take home in is make window functions or make window sequences, use NumPy to convolve them, achieve filtering. And we'll talk about some more detailed filters, um, you know, what, you know, kind of different kinds of windows that lead to different kinds of results. We'll do that on Monday. So, any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. In that case, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be safe. Um, I will send out an email about the exam. But like I said, plan on it being a week from this coming Monday, the Monday right before we break for Thanksgiving. Um, that way we can get things kind of wrapped up. So if there's nothing else, have a great weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday. Thank you. Goodbye.